Good morning. So I had made a video, 15, 16, 17 minute video, and I wasn't happy with it, so I'm starting all over again. So what have I been up to? Well, other than, of course, you know, Bonnie works all day. When she wakes up, she works till about 6.30 at night. And then we can do a few things. So last night we um, went with Maggie and Mike and we went, we got ice cream and then we went to the park for Finn because Finn likes, whoa, the park. And we were going to go to the beach, but dang, it was cool. And it was a strong breeze to go with that cool weather. So um, the beach was out of the question. And today we're going to go Goodwill hunting. Um, Bonnie needs some clothes and Maggie just loves to go thrift shopping. I find it incredibly boring, but I'll do it. Oh God, what if she watches this video? Well, you know, sometimes you've got to sacrifice a little bit so that your girls have a good time. So, yeah, that's on the agenda for today. So, yesterday morning, I started in on boxes on the porch going through paper. Boy, have I got a lot of old photos and old postcards, tons of them. Some real oddities, like, um, and I might have made a mistake. I sold a ledger from the Vermont Mutual Fire Insurance Company from the late 1800s into 1912, and every page was filled out. And um, I noticed the administrator of that Facebook page snatched that up in record time. I think it was worth probably three times what I sold it for, which is quite unfortunate for me, but then you've got to wait for the right buyer, you know, and I'm trying to downsize my stuff, so I'm not going to beat myself up over it, but I'm nervous about the other insurance stuff that I also have. And then some weird oddities like uh, an old Navy crew photograph. It's a, it's a good size one. And every single person in that picture had signed the back. That'd be good militaria. But it has damage, um, some rips and tears. And then I have this, it must have been an insurance company that gave out dish towels. And it has a little fire engine on one side. And the other side has something else. And unfortunately, I got a little tiny specks of mildew on one side. But the other side's perfect. I don't know. It, it, it's hard because if I was at a show, I'm going to find a collector for that item. And then we can dicker. Sitting here, trying to sell it online and trying to figure out what to sell it for, it's not so easy. As a matter of fact, I've got about 10 items floating in internet space and nothing's happened with any of them. Had I been at a show, I could say, okay, what about the postcards of Rome plus some Italy and some Switzerland? What do you want to do on those? Shows are easy for me. I know how to deal with people. I know that they're going to be there and they're looking for stuff. They don't want to go home empty-handed. They're going to buy stuff. They're going to take chances on stuff that they don't even know what it's worth. But they're hoping it's worth more than what I'm charging them. And I have boxes and boxes and boxes of it. 18-gallon totes full of paper, books, calendars. Old advertising cards. They gave away little advertising cards with cute little girls advertising their little ringlet curls. And sometimes they made fans out of the card. I need to be out there. But my back is a major player in this. 
I'm having trouble with my carpals. They're starting to go according to the last x-rays last year. But they're not surgery ready yet. I don't want to do that. I gotta start trying those exercises out. I keep saying that and I just put everything off. I need to stop putting things off. I need to start doing yoga. Yoga agrees with me and my girls who both have back issues. Bonnie's strong though. She's doing all kinds of stuff like rock climbing and you know, she just does everything. She works out and I told her, keep that up. Don't ever stop. A strong woman's going to have a strong back. And I'm so grateful that she has a desk job, though that's not good either. She's always, D -d 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 it's not good for your carpal. I know it isn't. I've thought about renting a van, and I've thought about buying a not-that-great van. Some are starting to come up, but um, on uh, cars.com and kbb.com and a few sites with vehicles. But all I can afford if I sell my car is an older van. And then welfare sends me a freaking letter. I get on the phone. Nobody's able to help me with the... Uh, Medicaid, and then finally I left a message. The woman did call me back. Now I get a letter that says that uh, I'm going to lose my food stamps because I didn't do the food stamp interview. There was never a paper saying they needed a food stamp interview. There was only a letter saying that I needed a Medicaid interview. I wasn't supposed to lose my food stamps till July, and then at that point is when I was thinking, as soon as they expire, sell the vehicle, get the van. I'm in a touchy situation. I don't want to end everything when I'm trying to be, get a disability designation. Once I have a disability designation, I can actually go camping for less in the national forests and the state parks. They will give you a discount. So if I decided on van life or even just to rent this out and try van life. I don't know. One of the investors looking at my trailer said, you know, do you know anyone who'd want to rent it out? They said, because it's really hard to rent these over 55 park trailers out, which is probably true because there's one down the street for 1300 a month, which is very expensive in my opinion, and it's not renting. They fixed it all up and everything, probably in season, but I was going to do month to month anyway, that way, um, you know, with maybe like a three month minimum for a snowbird that comes down this winter, if I keep it. I don't know. It's so hard to know exactly what to do because I can't see into the future. Oh, wouldn't that be something if you could know? Oh, yeah, Nikki, this is going to work out great. Or, oh, no, Nikki, this is going to be a disaster. The future. Maybe it's what you make it. But sitting here with all this paper that I can't get rid of, you know, even though I had to let things go really <laughs> for way less than I wanted to at Renninger's, I still sold it, but I still had so much more that I had that yard sale and I sold some, but not nearly enough. I'd really like to do like three major shows and just get rid of it all. Then I'd have money in my pocket and I could look at what I want from there. Contemplating. I found three very unusual postcards. They're picture postcards of a historical figure that's much hated. And um, I sent 
images of that to this auctioneer in Maryland who specializes in that sort of militaria, we'll call it. And uh, I'm hoping, hoping to get, you know, some decent money on those. It's rare stuff. So, and then I found some beetle photos, but they're just mass produced and not good enough. But, you know, I can probably sell the stack for 25 bucks to a dealer quick. And then they can whittle around and, you know, try to sell it for 10 each on their site. So I've been looking at vans and thinking, should I take a risk on an old one? Some of them are up in uh, the Carolinas, and that means I would have to go up there to retrieve it. I'd probably have to have it looked at. I don't want to get something with a bad transmission or engine right out of the door. Or, you know, needing like $5,000 worth of work. I don't want that. The prices of vans is astronomical. And I need something that can... It's a bit, you know, I wouldn't need to really tow. I could probably fill half the van with the stuff I want to take with me. And do one show, come back to Florida, fill it up. Or I could get a hitch on it, rent a U-Haul trailer, take everything up there, leave it in storage while I whittle it down. The season is moving north, and north is where northeast. And then again, Ohio and Pennsylvania, which isn't considered, I don't think, northeast. I think it's considered, I don't know what the hell it's considered. But um, there's a lot of good um, flea markets and um, places I could start unloading this stuff. You know, do the lesser stuff at the regular flea markets, do the better stuff at the shows. There's Stormville, New York. There's Madison Boakville in New York. There's uh, the Brimfields. Um, I could even go to Todd's Farm. Uh, on Sundays in Massachusetts and get rid of some stuff. And then once I have money in hand, I may want to look around for stuff myself that I'd like to sell, you know? It can be done and it should be done. My back is a major issue. But at Brimfield, students come around. Can we do any work for you today? Yes. Why don't you set up my tables in my tent and start unloading these boxes and put them on those tables? Then all I have to do is open that box, bring it out, and set it up. That's how that would work. And I know my kids would help me get it in the van and trailer to get it up to the north. Spots are expensive. Oh gosh, they're expensive. I don't know. Then I'd have to, if I had a trailer, I'd have to unload onto the spot and then, and they're only 20 deep, 20 wide and about 18 deep and so with the trailer would make it awfully hard. It, it's just hard figuring this out. You could understand that, you know, trying to juggle things in my mind. The other thing I could do is take a U-Haul truck. Just like a 16 foot I could get on my spot. I could also sleep in it. Just you know, I'm just not organized enough yet to be able to do it that way. I'm not organized. I could wait till the fall 
that might be smarter. Fall is a good show in September. Um, the spring show, May, is a good one. And then the, I think it's August show is a good one. Plus there's a Stormville before or after that. I, I could really get my crap together, have it all boxed up in categories, and at least have a general idea what I want, except for the stuff that I know in my mind. This is better, and i got to be careful. It's just hard because I've got all this stuff sitting in Florida is not good on old paper. It mildews. It gets eaten by silverfish and cockroaches. Oh, and I spray. Lordy, do I spray and bait, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's like an apocalypse of insects. And I do love fall up in the north. So that is probably very doable. Meanwhile, I could look for a van. And I could get off of welfare for a little while so that I can use up that money from selling the car or transfer it over into a van. Though I don't want to use it all up, you know what I'm saying? I want to have a little buffer of about 5000 bucks. So I'm looking at, you know, spending ten to twelve on a vehicle. A van. Because the best ideal for me, if I could do it, is to keep this and be able to travel. I'd like to do both. And I don't want to rent this out until I have all of those goods gone and someone can actually use the porch instead of it being just storage. Then everything that's personal to me can be locked into my shed. That would work. Decisions, decisions. It's tough. But I have a frame of reference now. I could work toward going out in the fall. And if I do really, really well, then I might be able to do a month or two with Rachel and Sedona this winter. Well, that's what's on my mind today. I can't get it off my mind, so I figured I'd talk about it. I think it's not a half bad plan. Take this time that I have. I'm so sick of dealing with welfare. I'm so sick of dealing with them. If I had enough income to tell them, stick it up your rump. But right now, I just don't. I need them. I don't want to need them, but I do. What the hell does that say? Little messages just pop up on this dang thing. Well, 18 minutes and 20-something seconds, so I think I'll end it here. And I'm not happy with this video either, but i got to download it. I've just wasted over a half an hour of my life trying to talk. Morning chat. At least I'm chatting about something. Some of you women say, I don't care what you talk about, just talk. Okay, there you have it. And to the dear woman that can't hear me, I, I can't talk too loud until Bonnie leaves. She's trying to sleep in, you know, the other side of the trailer and sound does carry. I have my door closed, but it doesn't matter. I just don't want to wake her up. She works so hard every day. God bless her. I mean, you'd think computer work is easy, but it's not. It's taxing on the hands and mind and body. She takes little occasional breaks, and she'll come and lay her head on my lap, and I stroke her beautiful hair. She has hair like her father and a face like her father's. Boy, sometimes she looks up at me, and it's like, wow, there's Dennis. Yeah, I see the see him and my kids, and it's comforting and saddening. He didn't deserve to have his life cut so short and worse than that, to suffer so long. Ah. Chickens one day, feathers the next. 
that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Thanks for staying with me, listening to my craziness. I'm going to figure this out. I'm strong and I'm smart and clever and I'm a survivor. Those are the things that are going to save my butt in the long run. Talk to you soon. Bye.